Through a Mirror by CSR. 9th of October, 27, Monday, 8.45 p.m. Not much happened today, except that I met, or more of ran into, a girl into the street. She had curly orange hair, amber eyes, and a freckled face. I thought she was actually really cute. She was wearing a school uniform and seemed to be in a hurry. I assumed that she was skipping school because classes were still in session at this time. I examined her closely to see if I could recognize her uniform. Burnt orange collared shirt, faded beige knitted sweater, dark green tie and bleated skirt, plaid knee socks consisting of green and brown, and very worn out brown shoes. She was an orphan. That was the colors of Miss Hummingbird's orphanage for teenage girls. The feeling she gave me was rather strange. It was almost like I was in the presence of a box or a mirror, more like a smarag. She looked just like a normal human being, but the box and the mirror look like just a normal box and mirror, don't they? We literally ran into each other. Like I said, she was in some sort of hurry. I could smell burnt rubble and ashes on her. She smelled like a smoker on top of that, but I knew this isn't what the smell was. I'm so sorry. I started. I didn't mean to run into you. Are you okay? I tried helping her, but she smacked away my hand. Watch it, idiot. She barked at me. She got up and tried to keep going, but I followed. Wait! I wanted to stop her and talk to her. At least make sure she ever- At least make sure everything was alright. Leave me alone. So I stopped in her pursuit and let her go. She obviously wasn't to be reckoned with at that time. I know that if we are meant to meet again, we will without a doubt. 9th of October, 27, Monday, 8.45 p.m. Not much happened today, except that I met, or more of ran into, a girl into the street. She had curly orange hair, amber eyes, and a freckled face. I thought she was actually really cute. She was wearing a school uniform and seemed to be in a hurry. I assumed that she was skipping school because classes were still in session at this time. I examined her closely to see if I could recognize her uniform. Burnt orange collared shirt, faded beige knitted sweater, dark green tie and bleated skirt, Plaid knee socks consisting of green and brown, and very worn out brown shoes. She was an orphan. That was the colors of Miss Hummingbird's orphanage for teenage girls. The feeling she gave me was rather strange. It was almost like I was in the presence of a box or a mirror, more like a smarag. She looked just like a normal human being, but the box and the mirror look like just a normal box and mirror, don't they? We literally ran into each other. Like I said, she was in some sort of hurry. I could smell burnt rubble and ashes on her. She smelled like a smoker on top of that, but I knew this isn't what the smell was. I'm so sorry. I started. I didn't mean to run into you. Are you okay? I tried helping her, but she smacked away my hand. Watch it, idiot. She barked at me. She got up and tried to keep going, but I followed. Wait. I wanted to stop her and talk to her. At least make sure she ever- At least make sure everything was alright. Leave me alone. So I stopped in her pursuit and let her go. She obviously wasn't to be reckoned with at that time. I know that if we are meant to meet again, we will without a doubt. Date, 10 9 Day, Monday, time 11pm. Shit. Real person, I screwed up. I screwed up so bad. Shit. What am I going to do? Shit, shit, shit. Cops pulled me out of class today and took me to the principal's office. Apparently, the store from Saturday recorded me. I freaked out. They threatened to send me to juvie. Heard I was some sort of fire starter at my previous orphanages. Heard I was always causing trouble and now they had proof that I was in criminal activities or something like that. I freaked. I really did. I melted the plastic chair I was sitting on. Then all the walls in the school caught on fire. I kept crying out for it to stop. Cops may have been jackasses, but they weren't just doing their job. The building began crumbling in the flames. I made a run for it. The only reason I ran was because I may be immune to flames, but I am not immune to a ceiling crashing down on me. 
looks strange, how my clothes and satchel never burn. Luckily for you, they never do because you were in my satchel. I feel a strange dependency on you and I've been carrying you around. But you don't fix my problems. You didn't stop the walls from burning. All you did was sit there and came along for the ride, only to hear about it later, even though you were there. Hearing all the screams, the fire alarm, the water trying to stop the fire, but you have to put out the furnace. I couldn't stop it. Maybe shooting me would have. I just kept running and the fire followed. Everywhere I stepped, a fire broke out. I decided to use it to my advantage. I went back to Miss Hummingbird's orphanage and lit that sucker on fire too. Then I continued to hit every godforsaken orphanage I've ever been to. I didn't care anymore. I seemed to be in control suddenly and felt calmer. I enjoyed it. I wanted to get payback. The adults never helped me. The children never deserved to be saved. Maybe their taunts are true. Maybe I am from hell. And that's where my soul is. They believe the devil has curly red hair and that gingers have no soul. Doesn't help that my name is Ginger. What sick sense of humor my parents had. Or at least they were unoriginal. Couldn't think of a name so they named me the color of my goddamn hair. Don't know what's worse. A name to describe my hair color or a lame ass middle name. Dottie. So stupid. I ran into some redhead on the way. She was a real redhead. Auburn or something. Made me think of some sort of bonfire. and strange. I felt like I should have known her, but I didn't recognize her at all. She could see I was frantic, but still tried to pe pester me. I just pushed her out of the way. She annoyed me. I continued to run. I had no clue where I was going except for out of this town. I eventually reached the outskirts. So I'm here. In this abandoned firehouse on some hill. Why is it so isolated? I haven't a clue. All I know is that no one knows I'm here, except for you and me. How will I die here? Starve? Exposure to the elements? The place falls down on me? I've given up. What's the point? Why should I fight any longer in a world that doesn't want me? It won't make some space for me. It won't check up on me. Why the hell should I continue? Why? Day. Date. Time. I'm sorry. 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 Day 10 10 27. Date Tuesday. Time 1 p.m. I'm not sure how I feel about yesterday. What if I killed someone? I probably did. What have I done? I'm trying to, but I can't feel. Day 10 11 27. Date Wednesday. Time 10 a.m. Turns out this place has canned foods and other stuff. There's some old pots and pans, but not all of this shit is usable. I'm gonna cook me some beans and pray I don't burn the place down. Ha! Me, praying. Just imagine that. The 13th October, 27, Friday, 5.32 p.m. I finally stopped crying. My eyes are so sore now. I'm probably too dry to cry anymore. <laughs> no, <laughs> I'm crying again. <sighs> Bubba's dead. She ran into the street and caught ran over. He was such a sweet kitty. <laughs> My little cuddle buddy. Just can't believe she's dead. I feel like I'm found it. The tears cease to stop. I'm gonna miss her so much. <sighs> I keep cuddling my pillow as I clench her first call that we got when she was just a kitten. She can't just be gone. How is life so weird? A person or animal dies and time just goes on. I keep counting the minutes and hours that past since she <sighs> two hours and nine minutes exactly 333 today it's Friday the 13th I'm not usually superstitious of this day 
but took my cat away from me. I hate you, evil day. Bring Baba back. She had so many years ahead of her. I can't handle this right now. I need release. 15th of October, 27, 11.15 a.m. I looked at the newspapers from the other day. They were on the table. I had just so happened to catch a glimpse of orphanage across the page. I picked it up and found out that all the orphanages I had ever been in were set on fire. Same with Miss Hummingbird's orphanage for teenage girls. It all happened the same day I ran to that girl for orange hair. Moments before our encounter, in fact. Is that why she smelled like she did? There were many deaths and injuries from the fires, but they didn't release any names. I hated all of them that were there when I was, but I'd never wish that upon them. How horrible. Day 10, 15, 27. Date, Sunday. Time, 12 p.m. Got hungry for something different, so I went down to a liquor store and stuffed a few nutrient bars in my bag. I waited for this place to get a bit crowded and for someone to beat at the cashier so I wouldn't get caught. While I was there, I also saw a newspaper about the fires. Some people lived. Some people barely got injured. Didn't care to know too much about who did or didn't. I just didn't want to think about it. It's no longer my concern. It's all over now, as far as I care. If there is a god, then he better have got the right people with my fire and punish them. That's what the devil does, after all. He punishes the wicked. If I'm from hell, then I'm just doing my job, or whatever. The devil works for God. People are just too stupid to get that. 16 of October, 27. Monday, 4.31 p.m. My parents are indeed allowing me to go back to Uchidesma. They realize that they're the same as my friends, and so as long as they are there for me, I am allowed to return. I mean, I haven't died or gotten injured in the five years or so I've been going, now have I? Perfect timing, too. I had planned to visit Kristen today. I always try to visit him at least every other month, and I haven't missed it yet. Today's meeting was... interesting. When I got there, one of the first things he said to me was, I have both good news and bad news. Oh. I respond with a bit of concern. Really? I'll start, I'll start with, with the good, good news, news since it's, it's rather short. short. I typically prefer good news last to make up for the bad, but I didn't want to tell him and make him feel bad. Due to good behavior, my sentence has been shortened, and I'll be allowed to leave within the next few years. That's great! I'm so happy for you! And so proud! You must be making great improvement, huh? The therapy must be helping, too. Yes, but on to the more important news of the present. There's a burner in your town. A what? Burner? Is that a smarag? Yes. They're very rare, but very destructive when they're on their own. They do tend to be more docile and tame when they unpack. How did you know that there was a burner in Homans? The Fowler told me. I have to keep an eye on you to make sure you're okay. There have been fires in your world recently. The Fowler is sure that you've run into this burner. Is it possible that he or she might look human? Yes, yes, it's, it's possible. possible. Smaragds, Smaragds have the ability, have the ability to, shift to shift into humans. humans. It's, it's a, a defense, defense mechanism. mechanism. Then it must be that girl of orange hair. I need you to be careful, careful if you've ever run into her again. again. Solitary, Solitary burners, burners are incredibly, incredibly dangerous. dangerous. They, usually they usually have a foul, foul temper, temper and have a hard time controlling their powers as a result. result. They're able to make fire out of thin air, and they leak asbestos when they do so. I'll be fine, Kristen. You won't worry too much about me. I giggled. But then his voice became harsher and sterner. Do not, Do not take, take this lightly, light, Marlala. Light. I realized how serious and concerned he was for me. So I promised to be careful. I told him about how my parents found out the truth and how I no longer am keeping Idridesma a secret from them. I guess it's a good thing for me, since now I can visit more often without needing to sneak around. I went home. Wondering what the girl ran into. I thought about how people call others of orange hair gingers, and then I remembered Ashley talking about an orphan named Ginger. She mentioned this girl was known for being a fire starter and different from the rest. For some reason, this girl had shared all my orphanages, 
my bed, my town, my bullying. We had met and it felt like we were supposed to. I met the one girl who remembered her and felt it necessary to tell me about her. I found the one newspaper that talked about the fires. Ginger had to be the girl I met and had to be the burner. It all made sense to me right away for whatever reason. It just had to be.